Hi guys, Vicar Andrew Mazzell here once again to continue our study through the book of Isaiah. Uh, today we will be going through Isaiah 41 and 42. Both excellent chapters, rich with tons of information that I hope to unravel and uncrack or crack for you guys so that you can learn a little bit from them and so you have a greater understanding of what these um, chapters hold. Now, in my end of my last video, I s had a slide that said, if you have any questions, feel free to email them to my email address. Well, what I thought was, if we get have questions, I would like to address them at the beginning of each successive video. So, if you have any questions at the end of this video, feel free to email me. I'll have another slide up with my email address. Uh, but since there are no questions at the moment, um, we're just going to kind of dive right in, right into Isaiah 41 and 42. Let us open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your word, the word that comes to us in the book of Isaiah and teaches us what you, who you are and what you have done for us. Help us to trust in that word as we continue to learn and just share this great message with all those around us. Be with us. It is in your name we pray. Amen. All right, let's get started. All right, here we go. We got Isaiah 41. Uh, 41. You know, this one kind of starts out, starts out with, uh, listen to me in silence, O coastlands and let the peoples renew their strength, let them approach, the, then let them speak. Let us draw together, draw near for judgment. Let us together draw near for judgment. See, this, this first verse is kind of open it into one big courtroom scene. See, God is calling all, all, all people to account. And so we'll see this in chapters 41 and 42. We'll see how he's calling everybody to account. He calls, he calls the idols to account, to, to their to answer for the power that they have and all that um, they can do, which well, we know is nothing. The idol worshipers. And then... His idolatrous people. He's calling them to account too. To listen to what he has to say to them. All right. He, he, he speaks in judgment over them. Because he, he's, he's the, the judge, the jury, and the executioner. He's the one who's um, really ruling over all of all of creation and everything, and we'll see that as a th major theme throughout the rest of the book of Isaiah. All right, who has stirred up one from the east? From the east, who do we know that comes from the east? Well, let's draw a little line over here. Um, well, first and foremost, it's Cyrus, king of Persia. See, he's gonna come across um, from what from the from the east and move into the Holy Land, set the the people of Israel free from their exile in Babylon, take over Babylon, really, um, destroy Babylon, really. And he's gonna cut through the nations like a like a hot knife does through through butter. Okay, so, who, so they, they come from the east, but who else do we see coming from the east? Because a lot of God's agents come from the east. Um, in uh, not angels, um, agents from the east. Who else do we see coming from the east? Well, one is a major father of the Bible, um, uh, Abraham, father of faith. Abraham came from the east, much like um, Cyrus did. Le left his left his home country, left his uh, pe his people, and followed God to a land he did not know. We have Cyrus, of course who is more pointedly in our Isaiah time period. And then we also have the Magi, more New Testament focused. Magi to warn about Herod, warn about the wickedness of Herod.
Oh, yeah, brilliant. Okay. Uh, now, continuing on, we got verse four. Verse four. This is another one of those questions. Who is the one who's doing all this? Well, our answer is in the second half of verse four. Our answer is right here and then following. It's the Lord is the one. I, the Lord, the first, last, and with the last, and I am he. The, the Lord is the one in control of all this. He is the one that is making all of this happen. And, and this is a theme that we will see throughout uh, really the rest of Isaiah, that the Lord, I, the Lord, and the first and with the last, I am he. He's, there's no one else but him. He's the one who does everything. See, the Lord is the still, still the one in control. Uh, these are, all of these, all these aren't just words that could happen. They're not just things, sayings that someone made and, well, we'll see if he's true. He doesn't really know what he's talking about, though. No, 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 not at all. These aren't just words that could happen. But they're sure in certain statements that these will happen, that all of this that the Lord says will happen because he is the one speaking it. He's the one saying that this will happen. All right. So what do, in verses 5 through 7, what do they do? What do they do then? Well, God is saying, don't trust in idols. Don't trust in idols. What can they do? They can't do anything. Now, Psalm 46, uh, let me think. What, what is that? Psalm 46, verses 2 and 3. Though the mountains roar and the, and the deserts quake, uh, do not fear. Something along those lines. Don't remember it exactly offhand. But anyways, that would be a good verse to look up for this um, passage. Don't trust in idols. They amount to nothing. Okay. Verse 8, verse 8, but you, Israel, my servant. Right here is the first mentioning, first time mentioning of the suffering servant. Now, we'll get into the suffering servant a little bit later. But you, but you Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friend, you whom look to the, I took from the ends of the earth, talking about when back with Abraham, from the ends of the earth and called from your its farthest corners corners. And what does God say He's going to do? I have chosen you, not cast you off. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen, I will help you. I will hold you with my righteous right hand. The Lord's going to be the one doing all of this. He's going to be acting so that everyone may benefit from him. See, this is, again, that last, that last question from the last lesson. Uh, the Lord will be using his power for the benefit of his people. Okay, let's continue on. Go back to the top here and move like that. Oh, look at that. More verses. Here we go. So, what do we have here? Now, 11 through 13, it's kind of a little bit daunting, but what, what we got to know is that 11 through 12, actually, amidst all of this, amidst this, this, God wants us to remember this. God wants us to remember that he's the Lord your God. He'll hold our right hand. It is, he says, fear not, for I am the one who helps you. Fear not. Oh, this, this I just wanted to touch on just a little bit. Fear not, you worm Jacob. Fear not, because, well, let's see. Fear not, you worm Jacob. Where do we see worms? This is just something really interesting that I thought was absolutely fascinating to point out. Where do we see worms? Well, worms we see in dirt. So they're kind of in stuff that's not alive. We, we see worms in death. Worms in death, worms eat dead things. They, they survive on dead things. That's what feeds them.
fear not, you worm Jacob, you men of Israel. What is this, this, this great gospel news right here, this promise? I am the one who helps you, declares the Lord. He's the one who redeems us from slavery, from, from slavery to sin, and he's the Holy One of Israel. See, and now, now this reminds me, reminds me of this, the song from the Lutheran service book. I'll write that down, LSB 437. And that verse one, and that says, Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die? Would he devote such that he devote, devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? All right. This is great gospel from God that he's just devoting himself to save us. He's our Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Now, these last couple of verses are, are the last few in um, chapter 41. And I just skipped ahead here um, to show them to you because this is a major theme. Um, God does not want us to trust in idols. There, Behold, you, you are nothing. Your, your work is less than nothing. This is talking about idols. And this is a major theme throughout this. Is, um, don't trust in idols. They amount to nothing. Idols are worthless. Idols equals worthless. But the, and the Lord alone He's the one acting. He's, he acts. Behold, I was the first to say, Zion, behold, they are. He was the one to work alone. And just this major theme that I, I'd encourage you guys to keep um, looking for in, throughout what you're reading in Isaiah so that um, you could maybe point it out, um, underline it. Anyway, all right, let's keep going. Isaiah 42, Ooh, 42, 42, the first suffering servant song. Just an excellent, excellent section here. Let me, there we go. Suffering servant song. Oh, brilliant. This, this suffering servant song, which is, um, it's the first one. And I'll, I'll kind of like label this out for you guys. We got the, the first one. The first one is 42 verses 1 through 4. All right. The second one is 49 verses 1 through 6. The third is 50 verses 4 through 9. And the fourth, the last one, is 52 verse 13 through 53, verse 12. Just excellent, excellent portions, portions of Scripture that we can all just look to and see what the, the rich connections that they have to the New Testament. So, behold my servant whom I have behold. The servant, the servant is Jesus. We, we know that the servant ultimately is Jesus. There are some other thoughts, other thoughts out there on who the servant could be, but uh, we know firmly that the servant is Jesus because of all that connects to him. Now, verses, verses um, 1 through 4, they're all speaking about Jesus in different ways. Put my spirit upon him. Well, where do we see that happening? Well, we got three little water droplets so I can draw. And baptism. See, see, so that he'll bring forth justice to the nations. All right? Um, what else do we have? Not cry aloud, faithfully bring forth justice. See this one, this one, I like this one right here. He faithfully follows what the Father is saying, and that's a mouthful. So faithfully follows the Father. He faithfully follows the Father and what the Father wants from the, the Father's will. Not what I will, but what you will, says, um, says the servant, says Jesus. He, he will not grow faint or be discouraged. Now, we see this theme. Verses 5 through 9, I'm just going to 
all the way to the end of the end of the little section here, verses five through nine. These you won't be able to see this because well, my camera's not far enough back, but that's all right. I'll scoot it forward as we go through. These or this right here is the epilogue of the suffering servant song. It's kind of saying who's going to be the one who's working all this, giving a um, finality to it. Now, each song does have an epilogue. Each one kind of summarizes what's talked about and uh, really shows the author of what it, like, the author of what's going to happen. And, well, as we see, as I said before, this theme, thus says God the Lord. He's the one who created the heavens and the earth, who gives breath to the people in it and spirit to those that walk on it. He says, I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people. Now here in verse 8, I am the Lord. That is my name. He's not going to share his glory with any other, nor his praise with any idols. He alone, God alone is the one acting. He's the one doing all of this. He's the one that is working amidst all of this. Behold, the former things have come to pass, the new things now I declare. All right. Ooh, brilliant, 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 brilliant. All right. Last little section here. So here it says, hear now you deaf. Now see, this is, and look, you blind that you may see who is blind but my servant. Now this sounds a little bit weird. A little bit weird because, well, is, is he talking about the servant? Uh, first off, um, in verse 18, we're, we're going back to the courtroom, right? Back to this courtroom scene where God is the judge, the jury, and and the executioner, the one making all the, the calls and all that. So you see that it's here, right here back in 41. We see he's calling his idolatrous people here now to this courtroom scenes where he's going to tell them tell them what it, what's, what's happening and what's, what's going to take place. So verses chapter 42, we're in 42 still, verses um, 18, 19. Who is blind but my servant? And see this in 19 and 20 it's not talking about jesus not not about jesus but the unfaithful israel because israel was the one that was getting distracted they were they were following after every god of the nation they could see just because they they were able to grasp hold of that and they thought they would trust in trust in that, but really, well, we've seen throughout this these last couple of chapters is don't trust in idols. And this this whole this whole section here, 20, 18 through twenty five, with missing a couple of verses in here, um, it, we see this dramatic change. And really, there's there's going to be really two salvations salvations for Israel from this. Well, the first one is physical, and we see that in Cyrus as he rescues them from, from uh, captivity, from exile in Babylon, and returns them to their homeland. Second one, as we see, is spiritual, and this doesn't come until Jesus. And that's when they have their, their spiritual... Um, uh, um, salvation, their, their eternal salvation is found. So let's write that, eternal. Eternal salvation is found. Now, who among you? See, now, this is still pretty dramatic change. Uh, who among you will give ear to this, will attend and listen for the time to come? Who gave Jacob to, be, to the looter and Israel to the plunderers? Was it not the Lord against whom we have sinned? This is, this is more rhetorical questions, if you ask me in whose ways we, they would not walk, and whose law they would not obey. The Lord says that it was, he was the one that gave them over to exile, to plunderers, to looters, and it's because of the fact that the fault lies with the people. Fault lies with the people. 
God doesn't change. God doesn't change, especially with regards to his love or faithfulness. This is, um, doesn't change, uh, really especially because of his, um, with regards to his love or faithfulness. If, he, if we are faithless, he remains faithful because he cannot change who he is. That's in 2 Timothy 2, verses, uh, I think it's 11 through 15. I think someone will have to fact check me on that one. Uh, 11 through 15. Uh, if, if we are faithless, he will remain faithful, for he cannot deny himself. And so, uh, this, this brutal ending, just a grim ending. So God poured on him the heat of his anger, poured on Israel the heat of his anger and the might of battle. It set him on fire all around, but he did not understand. It burned him up, and he did not take it to heart. He did not, the Israel just didn't wonder why God was acting this way. They were just like, well, you know, well, I don't understand what's going on. Why is God being doing this to us. Um, doesn't he love us? Well, yes, he does, but he doesn't want you to live this way. He doesn't want you to follow after idols. He doesn't want you to, um, what do I say, uh, go against his law. doesn't want you to uh, have a relationship with others. Just as, just as we heard in verse, uh, where was it? Oh, I think that was in the previous section that we went, um, right in verse 8, 42 verse 8, right down here. See? I am the Lord. That is my name. He doesn't give his glory to any other, nor his praise to carved images, to carved idols. He doesn't share his glory with anyone. All right. So this is a grim ending. The grim ending to this little section here. But I have a rather large but here because of the fact that all the promises of God, promises of God, are fulfilled in Jesus, in the servant. In Jesus the servant, when he went to the cross, and he does that so freely. So freely for each and every one of us. Okay. Well, there's Isaiah 41 and 42, just sections of it. Um, I hope it was good for you, and I hope you get a lot out of it. I will see you all again next time. Well, guys, there was Isaiah chapters 41 and 42. They were, they were just fun to go through. And again, I, I say, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Don't hesitate to email me. I'll have that slide up again at the end here. And just don't hesitate to uh, shoot me an email if you have any questions on anything I, I glanced over, anything I missed, um, anything you think I missed. And feel free to just share, and I'll address them in the next, the next lesson. Um, I hope this is beneficial to you, and I hope you enjoy and continue with us as we walk through Isaiah. Let's close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your word that comes to us in this book of Isaiah. We, we thank you for delivering us from sin, death, and the devil through the mighty act of your servant, our Savior Jesus. Uh, give us strength to continue to study your word as we navigate these waters, as we... Um, Spend a little bit more time at home. Strengthen us to spend more time in your word. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Thanks. Have a great rest of your day.